Well, good. Well, good morning. How many of you seen that movie? How many of you haven't seen that movie but want to now? Okay. Uh, that is Christmas with the Cranks. Apparently, Tim Allen is doing Christmas movies the rest of his life. That's going to be his... Next thing you know, he'll be on Hallmark Channel with the girl from Facts of Life or whatever show she's from, and that'll be the end. Not Facts of Life. What's the show? Blair? No, not Blair. Um, Candace Cameron. Yeah, what show was he from? Full House. Yeah, one of, those, one of those shows from a long time ago. Great to see you guys this morning. Hope you're doing well. I've obviously had lots of coffee, but it's great to see you this morning if you're watching here or online. So, how many of you have messed with lights this year already? God bless you. So, <clears throat> Tracy Rice knows all of this because I've sent Tracy Rice pictures intermittently. By the way, my dryer broke this weekend, and so I watched a couple videos online, and I, I tested to make sure that it was getting uh, 220 or whatever it's supposed to be. I don't know. I looked it up. And, uh, uh, 220, 221, whatever it takes. Uh, uh, check that, and then it was these parts that needed to be replaced, and when I looked at it, I said, you know, that's a fire hazard. A professional will be coming to my house tomorrow <laughs> to do that, because I am not causing a fire and having my insurance agent go, you did what? So, anyway, so one of the things I thought I would do, and you got to realize, I try to be a handy person, and uh, that's not all, it doesn't always work out well for me, which is why you have lots of stories for church. So, I decided this year, I said, lights are just too expensive this year. I am going to watch YouTube videos and fix my lights. I'm talking thousands of lights. And so, because uh, um, some of the strands, I've had five and six years, so you can imagine what they look like. Um, I was like overlapping them to make them look normal. So, I got the little gun thing that you stick on the end of the lights and you redo the little things that are down here so that the lights can come back on. And I probably got about half the lights on that way. And so I was like, really like, this is going great. And then I started going through and there were bulbs that were out. So I actually learned how to pull the bulb out and then pull the bulb itself out of the little holder, get a new bulb, put it in there, bend the little things, put it back in. And I was going through strand after strand and it was going not well. Hour after hour. Because the more I would work, the more I thought it's the very next bulb that'll do it. Well, this, let me tell you the point that I gave up. I was using the little thing to find where the electricity was, you know, and so I would check the thing and it would say there was electricity here. And so I'd say, oh, well, then that bulb must be out. I changed the bulb and it wouldn't light. So I thought, well, there must be something else. I just don't know how these things work. So when I finally gave up is when I was going through the bulbs and I changed out about 10 bulbs on this one strand. And then I looked and realized that the strand was unplugged from the plug and I had replaced 10 bulbs that did not need to be replaced and did not replace. And when I plugged it in, you ready? It still didn't work. And I said, Walgreens, I need you. And I went to Walgreens and it was a sign from heaven. There was an angel over the, over the lights that said two for one. And I said, it's Jesus telling me, no longer should you do lights. You should just throw them on the tree. So that's what I did. And so my tree still is uneven. And I am not kidding. Literally, I got the lights. I put them on the tree. It was all even and nice. And the next morning, there was a whole section out again because Satan loves Christmas lights, right? Now, if you've not been on a ladder and had the fun of trying to untangle lights that you had already untangled, you have not had the joy of Christmas. I almost fell off the stage saying this. You have not had the joy of Christmas yet. And it's amazing how you can have something not plugged in and not even realize it and think that you're working hard to do something and you're not plugged into the right thing. And here's what I'll tell you. When you go through a hard time in life, whether it's anxiety or frustration, irritation, anger, worry, is your first reaction to check the power? Are you really plugged into Christ? Are you really seeking what God wants first or are you plugged into yourself? I want the what I want. I need what I need. 
And a lot of times, if we're honest, the reason that we don't have peace is not because God can't give it. We're going to talk about how God can give peace. And I'm going to give you some ideas today about three ways that you can have peace this Christmas. But the truth is, sometimes we're not seeking Him first. We're seeking ourselves first, or we're seeking approval first, or we're seeking somebody, if they would just do what I want them to do, everything would be better. If I just had enough money, then I would have peace. If I just was married, I'd have peace, and all the married couples said, (laughs) right, right? Whatever situation we're in, we think, if I just had this, then I would have peace. Peace has nothing to do with your circumstances. Listen to me. Peace does not even have to do with what's happening in the world. We had terrible circumstances this week. The news, story after story, horrible story. And you think, uh, society has just gone downhill. Listen, I was born in the time in Miami where they thought Cuba was going to launch missiles at us. There's always been a circumstance to worry about. But in the middle of all of that, Regardless of your circumstances, God can give you peace. Not a natural peace, not a a sitting on the beach and doing nothing, so then I have peace for a couple of minutes. No, a peace that passes understanding. When life gets hard, how do you react? Are you plugged into Him? And just like with the broken lights, do we worry? Do we get frustrated? Do we call somebody? We post something? We write a mean note? Whatever we think, that's going to fix it. Or do we say, God, first and foremost... I'm going to seek you first. And so how can I find the peace of God this Christmas? Number one, first thing, present every request to God. Present every request to God. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, and you've heard me talk about Isaiah. Isaiah, uh, um, of course, um, is in the worst time of Israel's history. Um, uh, they're getting dragged away, they're being attacked, depending on where you're at in the book of Isaiah. And, it, and, and by the way, people argue over whether there's one, two, or three Isaiahs. Uh, I think there was one, two, or three emotional situations going on. I, I think that, you know, like you would write a certain way before a bad thing happened, and then a bad thing happens, and all of a sudden you write a little different way because you understand now, and then as you come out of that and you see God blessing anyway, your writing would become different But that's just my opinion, which is usually I like the best. Don't you like yours? I mean, not mine. You like yours, right? For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. Okay, time out. I'm sorry. I'm going to ruin this song for you. How many of you have ever heard some of the Messiah? I used to sing in the Messiah at Christmas time. And my voice is a lot higher than it is now. So I sang the the high guy part, okay? But our teacher, uh, Mrs. Willoughby, struggled with us because we left out the pause. Because you're supposed to say, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You hear all those pauses? And if you don't pause right, you're the one in the choir of a thousand people that's going, Unto us! Right? So she knew me, didn't want that to happen. So here's what she did. She said, just think of this. The problem with thinking of this is you, I'm going to ruin the Messiah for you. It ruined it for me because here's what she did. For unto us a child is born. Cha, cha, cha. Unto us. Cha, cha, cha. A son is given. Cha, cha, cha. Unto us. Cha, cha, cha. A son is given. I'm sorry I ruined the Messiah. It's such a great production. But, but you'll know how to pause. And you won't be the one that says, Halle! It's always that person. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He'll be called, and it's talking about Jesus, listen to this, wonderful counselor. By the way, our country would not exist without the advice of Jesus. Every country before ours just sought selfishness and self-centeredness. Yes, we still have a long way to go, but America is founded differently because of principles of Scripture and because of the words of Christ. Look at the early messed up, broken founding fathers, and you will see references, even those who weren't Christians, to Christian principles. Christian principles Help us to be unselfish and actually care about other people. That is a good thing. It doesn't happen with people in government very often. Okay. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor. What else? Mighty God. 
everlasting Father. Listen to this last one. Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of His government and peace, there will be no end. He'll reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. And, of course, that goes back to the the genealogy that we have in some of the Christmas stories that tell us what Jesus' line is. comes from the mom's side, by the way. And so you have Jesus' line, which included uh, uh, prostitutes, included people uh, who made huge mistakes. And yet God worked it out. And then it continues establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The zeal, the excitement. God saying, that's what I want. And so we say, he's the Prince of Peace. And then we say, but is he your Prince of Peace? The reason that sometimes we don't have peace is not because God doesn't want to give us. It's because we're not submitting to the Prince of Peace. We're submitting to our own desires, our own selfishness. That's why if you're a Christian and you're walking in sin, you will not have peace. If you have peace and you're a Christian and you, and you call yourself a Christian and yet you can walk in sin and it doesn't bother you, I would question whether or not you're really a Christian. Because the truth is, if you're a Christian and you're one of God's children and you've submitted to the Prince of Peace and yet you say, but I'm going to be selfish and self-centered. I'm going to do what I want when I want. I'm going to steal from whoever I can steal from. I'm going to overcome and be the center of attention wherever I am. I'm going to make life about me. You will not have peace. It's one of the ways God brings prodigal children home. Because you eating with the pigs is those nights you're up and going... I don't know, I just can't get settled. It's the Holy Spirit saying, because this is an area that you need to work on. This is a sin you need to confess. This is forgiveness you need to give. This is an item you need to return. This is some honesty you need to have. Because that's what God does. He is the Prince of Peace, but we have to submit to His Lordship. So Philippians gives us some ideas. You know, you look in the New Testament at what the early Christians went through. And this is what it says in the book of Philippians. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord occasionally. When you feel like it. When life is going great. No, rejoice in the Lord always. On on your hard day. On the difficult day. On the day you don't like what you're hearing. On the day you don't like what you're seeing. On the day you feel awful. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. And then it says, let your gentleness be evident to all. I love the word, this word in the Greek, because Greek scholars say they don't know exactly, they can't define it in just a few words. I love that. I love when other people have a hard time with something. It makes me feel better about myself. By the way, the staff this week, I was going to make a new uh, manger scene to put out with wood and they said we prefer you to have fingers we can order one on Amazon so it's out front <laughs> let your gentleness be evident at all this word for gentleness it's very hard to translate but it literally means being selfless it means you help somebody without thinking of yourself you go out of your way to do something for someone and you're not looking for return on your investment you are gentle in your gentleness. Be evident to all. The Lord is near. But what does that mean? It means God knows what's going on. So on those days that you see somebody doing something and you're thinking, oh, I can't believe they don't get caught. The Lord is near. On that day that you're doing something, <clears throat> the Lord is near. On that day you're gossiping about somebody or you're complaining and boy, you're in traffic and that person is going 69 in the left lane on I-95. How dare they? Wasn't there a time we couldn't drive 55? Now we can't drive 70. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about what you feel okay about. No, don't be anxious about anything. Basically, don't worry about everything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and what will happen? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Why? Because when you are selfish and self-centered, you come out from under that guard... And the enemy attacks you with your selfishness and you worry and you're frustrated and you can't believe people would do, I can't believe people would do. And you watch the news over and over again until they get you all flustered, right? And you just keep walking out from under the peace. 
and you think, I don't know why I'm so aggravated. I mean, I spent 12 seconds in the Bible this week and three hours watching the news. Whether you watch the, the peacock or the fox, it doesn't matter. They all are telling you what's wrong. And the Bible will tell you what's right. But you have to surrender to God's authority and let him, let him come to you and give him your presence. Sin causes unrest. We have to surrender in order to find that peace. We have to turn off the news and open our Bibles. And say, God, remind me of what matters. Do you know why we sing songs of praise? Because we have nothing better to do. We try to fill 20 minutes of the serve. No, right? Because I understand as a pastor that you can't hear anything out of God's word until you're refocused on who God is and worship of him. And once you're able to enter into that, then you open God's word and the Holy Spirit goes, Steve, that one was for you. Sorry, Steve. You're going on another cruise, so I'm just picking on you today. Mike's on a cruise right now. Pastor's not on a cruise. Some of us have work to do, and our wives won't let us go on a cruise. Did I say that second part out loud? That meant to stay inside. Listen, the next time you're struggling, we struggle a lot with people, right? Some of our worries are about people. I want you to imagine yourself, instead of a present... I want you to imagine yourself coming before God with that person. Holding their hand. Not their face. Not dragging them. Imagine coming to Christ with them and saying, Jesus, would you help me to know what to do about this person? If it's a situation, then you come as a present. God, would you help me to know what to do with this situation? God, I'm going to trust you. Martin Luther said this, I've held many things in my hands and have lost them all. But whatever I've placed in God's hands, that I still possess. Martin Luther could have easily lost everything. He came against the early Catholic church to say, I think what you're doing is not from the Bible. He was willing to risk everything in order for us to get back to Scripture. Number two, remind yourself that he is with you. Have you ever had the moment that you just know God's with you? About eight years ago, I had a funeral, maybe nine years ago now, maybe almost ten. Goodness, I'm getting old. I had a funeral, and after the funeral, a man walked up to me who did not like me. And he grabbed me by my face and slapped me three times in the face as a bunch of church members saw him do this. Several church members said, why didn't you punch him? To which I initially thought that didn't even cross my mind. And here's why. Because when that happened, God instantly gave me peace. And I can't say I always hear God. You know, the main way you should hear God is from His Word. And whatever you hear should always line up with His Word. And 99.9% of what you hear from God will be from His Word. But, that day I sensed that what God was saying to me is, the reason this person's mad is because you're doing what's right. So I didn't punch them. I didn't get mad at them. Believe it or not, I felt sorry for them. I was hoping that before they passed away that they would come and apologize. But they passed away without ever coming and saying, I'm sorry. I had a bad day that day. I had too much coffee. It was Claritin. Whatever, right? Can God give you peace in the middle of being attacked? Yes. That's the reason Romans hated Christians. So much. Because they would bring them and kill them different ways in the arena. And the Christians would have a look of peace on their face. Which eventually the Roman emperor said, okay, enough. Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He knew where he was headed. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you could possibly have trouble. Is that what it says? No. You will have trouble. How many of you have ever had trouble? Right here at River City. Right? Right? I'm bringing up musicals, by the way. If you have no idea what that was about, just Google trouble here in River City. In this world, you will have trouble, but, listen to this, take heart, which means take courage. Be courageous. Focus on what matters. I have overcome the world. So the angel Gabriel 
comes and says this to, to Mary, the angel. By the way, the Mormons think that Gabriel is uh, uh, Moses, which would mean that Gabriel got drunk one time, which is just a weird... Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so here it goes. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, this is Gabriel, who in the Old Testament gave prophecies to Daniel of the, what was to come. He says, listen, Greetings, you who are highly favored. By the way, I always imagine Gabriel, watching the Old Testament unfold, gets sent a couple times to give messages, right? And so angels are sent to give messages. They're just sent to wipe people out sometimes. They're sent to warn people. They are God's mafia, okay? So, so Gabriel comes, in a good and a bad way, they protect the family, right? Right? So Gabriel comes, and they work for God the Father, so Gabriel sees all this happening, and then God says, I got an assignment for you. Go tell this young virgin this message. But be tactful. Read how to win friends and influence people before you go. And so Gabriel doesn't just come and say, hey, Mary, you're pregnant. Congratulations. See you later. <laughs> Greetings, you who are highly favored. So that's his introduction. Greetings. Hey, God's blessing you. The Lord is with you. Hang on to that. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. We're doing good till this point, right? And then he says, you found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you're to call him Jesus. He will be great and called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. He said, the Lord is with you, so what I'm about to tell you is okay. Hey, whatever news you're expecting, whether you went to the doctor this week and you're waiting for that phone call, or you talk to a relative about a friend and you're waiting for that phone call, or you get a call in the middle of the night that worries you and you're worried about the next phone call? Or your daughter is taking classes overseas and they lock down the city that she's in? I don't know anybody that's happened to lately. God, you're with me. And not only are you with me, you're with them. So God, remind me that you are with me. And I believe the Holy Spirit whispers to us, peace be with you. You know, it used to be that people did that in church. They would say, peace be with you, peace be with you. What's really funny is that there's a movie out on Netflix. You get a chance to watch it. It's great. It kind of gives you the idea of what it's like being a non-Christian and coming to church called The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. And so he doesn't really know what he's supposed to do in church, so he Googles it. He dresses in khaki pants, tucked in long sleeve shirt, looks like a dork comes to church, and all the way in, he says to every single person he passes, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be, to the point that it's hilarious, he's just saying peace to everybody, uh, the, the communion comes, and he grabs a handful of the wafers, because he doesn't know what he's supposed to do, I mean, it's amazing, but the truth about peace be with you is this, God whispers that to you all the time, and we don't receive it. And we don't take what God's given us because we're so busy looking at ourselves and our own desires and our own evil thoughts and our own frustrations and our own things that we would like to be working better. And boy, if they would just do what I want them to do, then I would be happy. The Lord is with you. Sometimes it would be good if you would just say to yourself, God is with me. God, I know you're with me. I don't feel like you're with me today, but I know you're with me. Number three. Receive his gift of peace. So let's say you're frustrated. And let's say right now this gift is not showing up on your door. Amazon has not delivered your peace yet. <laughs> By the way, I noticed in my neighborhood there was all of a sudden 42 posts about Amazon packages being lost. So I'm guessing yesterday's Amazon guy got lost on the way to people's houses or something because it was almost funny. Some of you feel like God's forgotten your peace wrapping. Everybody else got one, but you didn't get one. So I want to give you a practical way. You know, they talk about the steps of peace. You ever heard of the steps of peace? So I remember Peter Lord years ago talking about when you're overwhelmed with a situation, what do you tend to do? You tend to focus on the situation or the person. So some of you, even this morning, are having a hard time listening to me because there's something bugging you. You're worried about something, and that's all you can think about. So I'm going to give you a practice that Peter Lord taught years ago. Take the alphabet. You know the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Can't remember the rest. All right? Right? 
And by the way, most of you still file and still sing to yourself, which is just weird because I do it too. All right, so, right? I'm looking up numbers on my phone. I'm going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, there I am. Okay, so you know the alphabet. It's an easy one. Take the alphabet, take a walk, and go through the alphabet thinking of things you're thankful for. If you're an engineer, Lord, thank you for amperage. That's where you'll start, right? If you're like me, start with food every time. Apples, Lord, thanks for apples and bananas, carrots, right? I get all the good stuff, right? But just go through the whole alphabet. Why? Because you're taking your focus off your problem and you're gazing at God. Peter Lord used to say, glance at your problem. Gaze at God. How do we do that? John 14, Jesus says this, All this I've spoken while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. By the way, Advocate is the word for lawyer. It's like the best lawyer you'll ever meet. Like, there are some good lawyers. I know you may not know that, but there really are, okay? This lawyer's even better. He fights for you. He petitions for you. When you fight yourself, the Holy Spirit's there to remind you, no, no, you're, you're not a doofus. No, 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 you're not worthless. No, 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 you do matter. No, 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 I don't care what that person said. God is with you. That advocate is there. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things. How? Through His Word. As you spend time in God's Word, the Holy Spirit will enlighten it, bring it to life. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give you as the world gives. And then he says, don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Most of us, when we lose peace, it's because we're fearful or angry. Anger is all about control, so it's the same thing. God, I can't control this. I can't fix this. I'm with you. Holy Spirit reminds you that He can give you peace. I want to encourage you. When you find you're losing your peace, you can take a praise walk, but the other thing you can do, just open your Bible. Spend some time in the Psalms. David of all people, had a hard time. Spend some time reading God's Word and just letting Him remind you of how awesome He is and how He's with you. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. Uh, Maybe you're watching online or maybe you're here. Maybe you know about Jesus, but you've never said, Jesus, I want to give my life to you. You can do that today before you leave. And so I'd love to talk to you about what it means to surrender your life to Him. That's really what it means to be a Christian. It's not just reading your Bible. It's not just doing religious things. It's about saying, Jesus, I surrender to your Lordship. The Prince of Peace, I surrender to you. If you want to do that today, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. Maybe you're here today and as a Christian, the truth is, you're really struggling. You're discouraged. You're frustrated. You're depressed. Hey, my prayer is regardless of what's happening to you, it's okay to be sad and have peace. It's okay to have something going on that you don't like and have peace. Peace that passes understanding. Let's pray. Father, may we walk in that peace. Lord, it's so easy to talk about, but then we get in a hurry. We get to rushing through life and we get aggravated. Lord, we have somebody come up to us and verbally slap us in the face. We have something happen that we don't like. And Lord, it's difficult for us sometimes to rest under you, the Prince of Peace. Father, I pray for that one today who right now, they feel like their presence of peace is very empty in their lives. Lord, I pray from your spirit, the advocate right now would remind them of your presence and give them peace. We thank you for these moments together in Jesus' name. Amen.